So we're looking at 4.2 today, which is permutations when all objects are distinguishable, and that's on pages 246 to 257 in your text. Our curriculum outcome today is to demonstrate understanding of combinatorics, including the fundamental counting principle, permutations, and combinations. And our lesson objectives today, number one, to understand what a permutation is and how and when to use the permutation formula or button. To understand what the factorial symbol means, and that's that exclamation point that you may have seen on your calculator. And number three, to know when and how to use cases in order to answer a permutation question. So the questions that we did last day were all examples of what we call permutations. So you're actually doing permutations last day. And that's just a fancy name for a specific arrangement of, of things or of objects. So if you had a stack of six different books, how many ways could you place them on a shelf? Well, we did a little fill in the blank sort of approach to this question. Um, if you're going to place any one of the books first, you have six different books you could put first. And then after that, you have five, four, three, two, and one. And so we found out that, that was 720 because we just multiply all those things together. Now, what if you were only taking four of those books and arranging them on the shelf? Well, then we'd only have four blanks because we're only going to put four books in there. But the first book, we still have six different options, and then five, and then four, and then three. And that gives us 360 different arrangements of putting four out of those six books. So what we're doing there is we are using something called a permutation. And now the permutation um, button on your calculator looks like this. And that's NPR, and that equals N factorial over N minus R factorial. So what does this factorial mean? Well, we actually just did factorial in the first part of this example. A factorial, so if we're saying six factorial, that's just taking six and multiplying by um, one less than that number all the way down to one. So six factorial, if you look at that on your calculator, you're gonna find that that also equals 720. And so factorial again, just multiplying by um, the number and then just decreasing that number by one each time and multiplying all those numbers together. So instead of doing that, like if we had 100 books, we wouldn't want to multiply 100 by 99 by 98 all the way down to one. Um, you would just put 100 factorial into your calculator. So this NPR button, this permutation button, um, this N is how many total options you have. And this R is just talking about how many you're actually taking. How many you're using. So for this example that we just did here, that would be a 6P4 sort of thing. And if you plug that into your calculator, find your permutation button, you're going to find that to be 360. If we use the factorial notation part of this equation, that means we get 6 factorial on the top, and on the bottom, we get 6 minus 4. And if we did that the long way, well, that's just 6 factorial divided by 2 factorial, and that just gives us 360 again. And just to show it to you the longest way, just to see what's actually happening here, we have 6 factorial which is 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, divided by 2 times 1, which is 2 factorial. You can see that these last two just cancel out with the 2 on the top, and we get 6, 5, 4, 3, which is exactly what we did up here. So a permutation um, is just a fancier name for a specific arrangement, and you could either fill in the blanks, but sometimes filling in the blanks will just be too long, so you could use the permutation formula or button on your calculator, and that's going to help you out immensely. So our next type of example is permutations with cases. So a permutation when you have to use something called cases is when you can't fill in all the blanks adequately at one time. So for example, when creating a password for your computer, you can use anywhere between three and five characters. They could be capital or lowercase letters and any numeral. So how many different passwords are possible? Assume you can repeat any numeral or letter. So if we can repeat any number or letter, um, we need to know how many total options we have. And that would be 26 capital letters, 26 lowercase letters, so that's 52, and then any numeral, numerals being from 0 to 9, so that's another 10. So we have 62 total options. Now the reason this is a, uh, an example of cases is that in one case we can have three different characters in our password, and the next case we can have four, and then the next case we can have five. So what happens is that we need to figure out each of these separately and then add them all together to, to find out how many different passwords are possible. So we have 62, 62, 62 here. And then we have 62, 62, 62, and 62 here. And then we have 62 options there. So when we do that, when we find out what this would be 62 cubed and 62 to the fourth power and 62 to the fifth power, if you find those and you add them all up, you're going to get to a whopping 931 million 
147,496 different passwords you could create if your password had to be between three and five characters and if you could use capital or lowercase letters and if you can um, repeat any numeral or letter. So our uh, next type of uh, Our next type of permutation question is going to be a permutation with conditions. And so a condition is a rule that has to be met when determining your number of arrangements. So here's our example. It says, how many ways can four boys and three girls be arranged in a line if they could stand in any order? They need to alternate boy-girl. The boys must all stand together at the front of the line, or the boys must all stand together, but they could be anywhere in the line. So these are just adding some conditions. So the first one, A, where you're just having all four boys and three girls, they can stand in any order. So that just means there's seven of them. That'll be seven factorial. And that would be 50, 40, 5,040. Now, when we start throwing in some conditions, you might want to draw a diagram, um, like fill in the blank sort of thing. It depends on how you want to do things. But I'm going to fill in the blanks because that's how I usually do these types of questions. It says it has to alternate boy, girl. So um, since there's four boys and three girls, that means that it has to start with a boy. And we have an option of four different boys that can stand there. That means there's three boys that could stand there, there's two boys that could stand there, and there's one boy that could stand there. In the girls, there's three different girls that could stand here, two different girls that could stand here, and one different girl that could stand there. So if you notice, four, three, two, one, that's just four factorial, and three, two, one is just three factorial. So we can just take four factorial, multiply it by three factorial, and we will get 1,000, or sorry, 144 different arrangements if you had four boys and three girls and you have to alternate boy girl. Part C, if all the boys must stand together at the front of the line, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blanks again, this has to be a boy, this has to be a boy, this has to be a boy, and this has to be a boy. Well, we still have four, three, two, one because they all have to be boys. So any four of the boys could stand here, then three boys, then two, then one. And then the girls have to be at the end of the line, three, two, one. So again, that's four factorial times three factorial. That's 144. And D, if we, they all have to stand together anywhere in the line, but they, uh, they could be anywhere in the line, but as long as they're standing together. So the way I kind of like to illustrate this is I could have all four boys in these positions, or they could all shuffle down one. So they could be in those four positions, or they could all shuffle down one again. They all have to stand together though, uh, or they could all shuffle down one for a final time. So it's this arrangement, this is just one of them, but you could do this in four different ways, or mul you have to multiply it by four, sorry, because there's, um, you could have, in the second case, we could have any of the girls standing here, and in the third case, we could have any of the girls standing there. So we actually get 144 multiplied by four because these boys could be in four different positions and that gives you 576 different arrangements. So in summary, sometimes it might be easier to use a permutation formula or a button than to fill in the blanks, but every question that's a permutation could be answered with blanks. Um, and remember that our permutation formula is NPR. Remember N is your total number of objects and R is just how many you're going to take and put in that arrangement. And when answering a question, you need to ask yourself a few questions. Do you need to use cases? And that means do you have to, um, make, like we had three different digits or four different digits or five different digits, and then we had to add those things together. So remember with cases, you need to be adding at the end. Um, and are there any objects that have to be in specific location in the arrangement? So are there any conditions that have to be met? And then I would probably use the fill in the blanks method. And your assignment is on pages 255, 257. Oops. And your last one is, can you repeat any letters or numbers? Because that also makes a big difference in how you're going to do this. So your assignment again, pages 255, 257. Uh, good luck, and we'll see you in class.